for one who practices satipatthana, in accordance with this uh, Adasma Mariri, training the thing in the mind, putting the mind on the right track, uh, one uh, cultivates knowledge beginning with, uh, one cultivates knowledge beginning with the beauty of mind, and the discernment of mind and body, and the discernment of conditionality, and also uh, in respect of this conditioned things, one observes arising and passing away, and whatever arises and passes away cannot be satisfactory, and uh, cannot be self also or insubstantial. Seeing the, seeing out of the three parts of an object, namely beginning, middle and the end, one goes beyond seeing of, one, one sees beginning and the end instead of the middle. One is seeing the rising and passing away in a fast manner, that is the knowledge of rising and passing away of mind-body objects, Udhya Vyanyana. At this stage, one is said to be reaching the tender stage of this insight knowledge. Then uh, one is bound to realize the taste of the Dharma, Dharma delight, and uh, one will be able to continue one's practice in a very efficient way. And if one uh, thinks, one takes this kind of Dhamma delight as the real path, uh, real road, then one may be deviating from it. Then you need to, uh, at this point you need to approach the spiritual teacher or friend and uh, even for, uh, whether your path is correct or not, whether you are on the right track or not. And even those who are knowledgeable yogis, when they come to this stage, although they may understand it as a wrong path, they may be attached to such uh, delightful things. If one is not delighted in them, it is well and good. If our attachment arises to such things, then one has got to activate mindfulness and get over, get over them. Then one will be in accordance with the Buddha's saying, one will not be going outside, nor stagnating inside. Then uh, if one is not either going, neither going outside or nor staying inside, one will be able to overcome suffering and uh, one will be cultivating the real knowledge, free from uh, mistakes or wrong paths. In accordance, in accordance with the saying, uh, unknowing one clings and knowing one abandons. That is, one abandons the mental corruptions. Then, uh, then the, uh, the, the impurities don't arise, or abandoned means, not that uh, they arise and they are eradicated, but that they are not allowed to arise in the stream of consciousness. When you are not attached to this, uh, when, when, when you are not uh, attached to this, there will be no powerful attachment that is clinging. When there is no craving, there will be no clinging. And there will be no wrong views, deity. In this way, you will be free from the, the round of defilements, which is made up of avijatana, ubadana, ignorance, craving and clinging. And then uh, you will be progressing along the inside path, coming to the fulfillment of the practice, realizing the path of fusion knowledge of the noble ones. In that case, you will be, you are said to be on the right track, on the right track of insight, in accordance with the practice of right self-regulation, Arasamapanidhi. 
you are your path is correct at that point then if you realize the path the first path consciousness or the first stage of uh, attainment then uh, you will not fall into the states of loss uh, you will not go wrong anymore and you will not be putting your mind on the wrong track for sure at this stage uh, you are beginning to cultivate the inside knowledge known as Uriya Vyajana at the tender stage beginning to cultivate this inside knowledge now as regards the inside higher inside knowledge beyond this Uriya Vyajana such as Benga Jnana and so on uh, it is not possible for us to discuss at this point if one undertakes the practice continues the practice one is bound to understand these inside knowledge obviously and for those uh, who uh, come to completion and listen to the progress of insight they will understand to what extent they have reached uh, as for now the yogis are to practice the, uh, the only work of yogis is to activate mindfulness in the strike of whatever arises then uh, if one just as a saying if one uh, continues the journey one is bound to reach the destination so to if one walks the path of insight one is bound to reach the goal of nibbana because uh, it is important to take this uh, atta as mind in the atta samabhadi one has got to keep the mind straight or straighten the mind uh, in a sense uh, the whole body also is taken as atta and when one takes mind as atta if one is not cultivating the mind then one will not be properly shaped if the mind is not properly shaped it will not be wholesome then uh, if only when it is good the physical verbal behaviors will be good if the mind is tamed especially with the practice of sati patana the mind will be properly shaped then will be uh, physical and verbal behaviors hence in the text atta is taken as the mind so when the atta is taken as a whole body instead of just a mind then uh, if one is cultivating the uh, cultivating the body the mind also is involved in it hence also in the text atta is taken as the whole body because uh, both the body and the mind are taken if we if they are properly cultivated then uh, the according to the commentaries if one has no faith or one does not believe in the object of faith then one has got to cultivate faith and after finding out what are the objects of faith what are the objects worthy of faith then one will come to understand it then there will be faith and confidence if one has no moral virtue then one should practice moral virtue if one has one is stingy vichriya then one has got to overcome this with dana and put the mind on straighten the mind and uh, if one's physical verbal mental, mental behaviors are not correct then one has got to tame them with the practice of sati patana overcome and wholesomeness in this way one practices sati patana to cultivate all these behaviors that is physical verbal mental behaviors in fact uh, the practice of atasma paridi is uh, to overcome 
these unwholesome behaviors which have been all along with us throughout our lifetimes. They are impure things, they are impurities, they are mental uh, corruptions, they are violent things, they are tormenting things, oppressive elements, despicable, and uh, they are nothing, uh, they are none other than greed, hatred, and delusion. In this way, one should understand it. And there are three types. One is the gross form of defilements. Another is the obsessive defilements. And uh, the third one is latent tendencies. In this way, there are three types. Uh, in, in another word, gross form, the violent forms, the medium form, and the refined form. And uh, if one commits the extreme, uh, extreme kind of great hatred and delusion for self-interest, then one is bound to make a lot of, to commit a lot of wrongdoing, leading to the loss of one's dignity. One, may, one will become defiled. At the same time, others will be harmed. So, as for these transgressive defilements, they can be overcome by sila seka, morality practice, and as regards the obsessive defilements, they can be overcome by the practices such as the practice of satipatthana, by first weakening them, and as regards the latent tendencies, uh, they can be overcome by the practice of insight, with the cultivation of insight knowledge and uh, uh, the knowledge of the Noble Ones. Uh, and then uh, in this way we can, uh, the, the transgressive forms are overcome uh, by, by moral practice and the obsessive ones by concentration and then the hidden, hidden tendencies by insight knowledge. And with the realization of path consciousness, we can eradicate altogether, at least uh, so as not to fall into the states of loss. At least uh, we will overcome the impurities which can pull us down to the states of loss, or to the woeful states. So that then our physical, verbal, mental behaviors will become blameless, pure, gentle, free from oppressive elements, peaceful and lovable. And the root cause lies in the practice of the three trainings by which, with which we cultivate our life. In order to uplift oneself, one cannot rely on a supreme being. One has got to do it by oneself, by oneself. No supreme being will bestow upon you things that you need even the Buddha uh, only gives guidance how to cultivate one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors. The definite guidance. As for the Dhamma, it is the definite guidance, teachings which provide definite guidance for the prosperity of all beings. And in order to be able to behave well, properly, uh, the Buddha sets out the rules of conduct called Vinaya. Uh, so in this way, he shows a way, not uh, just bestow you, take it or leave it, that sort of thing. Uh, as for some people, they may take refuge in the Supreme Being without uh, oneself undertaking the practice. If one relies on another, then one is bound to go the wrong way and suffer loss in one's life. And if one is relying on others, then one is to be inferior. One has got to practice by oneself. As we just discussed, uh, in accordance with the human culture, uh, the practice of Dharma the method of Dharma has been given in order to cultivate or shape our life, to cultivate ourselves. 
and from the only point of view, uh, there are things which we need to do for health, and uh, we must uh, be careful about taking the right food, the right drink, and uh, follow the us to the right way of living. And uh, when it comes to those, when it comes to worldly business, one should not be lazy. One should strive. One should work hard, and so on. Uh, the, there are things that we, we need to do. So, uh, in the mundane field also, one has got to cultivate one's physical and mental things uh, to put them on the right track to be to be correct. And such also is the practice of Atasamapanidhi. For those who think that uh, they will wait until they get old in order to practice Dhamma, if they are still alive, it's okay. If they are still healthy, it is okay. If they are, everything is uh, in good condition, all the facilities, if they have the facilities, it's okay. If they can meet uh, with the Kalyana Mita also it's okay. Uh, but uh, if you have no chance, if you lose a chance, then uh, it will not be okay. So while there is a time, what is the chance? One has got to undertake the practice. In this condition during the Buddha's time, there was a story about a prince known as Prince Bodhi. Since he was in the womb, uh, the mother took him. Uh, the mother went to the three gems for a Dhamma Sangha and take refuge uh, in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, the three gems. And when the prince was born, it was taken to the Buddha to take refuge. That is another occasion for paying respect to Sadhya Bhutu, object of faith. A kind of uh, you know, giving a sort of a vapor, some odor of vapor. Of course, at that stage, the child or the child, the baby in the womb will not know about the three gems. However, the mother did that with good understanding, uh, with good future prospects, and in a way, it is a plan for Atasamapaniti. So if the whole world or the majority of the people can do like this, like this Atasamapaniti, and let the four wheel prosperity rotate, then it will be a happy world to live in. If one wish, uh, one wishes to be good parent or mother or father, to bear lovely children, one should practice Arasma Bhadidi, for one bears children, and if the parents are properly cultivated and properly practiced, then the children also will be properly molded, properly cultivated. And the parents are like fertile soil, and the children are like the seeds. And uh, if the fertile soil is good, then the seeds will be successful to grow into plants. So, to become good parents, one should be fulfilled with this practice of Atasamapanidhi. Then one is bound to bear good children, and it will be a very satisfactory family. So, one should, uh, although Jaro himself is not a parent, but he wishes uh, parents to be good ones, to bear good children. If one is uh, fulfilled with this Atasamapadidi, the four wheel prosperity, then other sampati, other fulfillment. Other sampati also, one will become fulfilled with other prosperity, other sampati fulfillment. Even if one has not done good deeds, sufficiently good deeds in the past, 
or even if one has done only very very little or few things uh, in a good way if one can practice arasma bhidi in this very life then one is bound to progress in this life and if one progresses in this life the future also one will also be progress one will also progress in the future not to mention if one has done good deeds in the past uh, and now with supplemented or complemented with the present arasma bhidi and because of the past success you are bound to succeed in the present life and because you succeed in the present life because you are fulfilled with this fulfilled prosperity uh, you are bound to be fulfilled with the prosperity in future so by thinking about this you should you should be happy to think about you should rejoice on the practice of ardha samapadi so in order to uplift one quality of life one cannot uh, do it by means of uh, the material prosperity nor by material uh, worldly education one cannot measure one still not living in this way and the buddha has given in his dhammapada that uh, if one's mind is not cultivated and the art the uncultivated mind will lower one's status of life uh, if however one's life is cultivated with this powerful prosperity then this uh, this mind which is cultivated will uplift one's quality of life such as being given in a dhammapada so this uh, downfall or up, upliftment of life uh it depends on arasma bhidi as a four way prosperity and this arasma bhidi is the standard of measurement uh to measure whether one side will be uplifted or downgraded or degraded and if one practices uh arasma bhidi if one is fulfilled with this for feel prosperity then one will be uplifted and on the other hand if one is deficient in this practice or if one is not practicing this then automatically one's life will be degraded <clears throat> it goes without saying that if one practices atasambhavadi one's quality of life will be uplifted and if one does not practice atasama bhidi one may be called a human being but when one will not be up to the human standard at this point we wish to discuss about the meaning of manusa given as human being manusa is human being as a one who possesses sharp mind and this sharpness of mind can be both in a good way or a bad way if one is sharp in a bad way that means if one is not cultivating one's mind with the practice of satipatthana one may become very violent in deeds uh, leading to inferiority and one will one will become lowest in one standard of uh, human standard and on the other hand if one cultivates one's mind as much as one cultivates one's mind then uh, one will even reach the status of enlightenment as a buddha one can even become a buddha uh, that is if one's uh, sharp mind is in a good way so if uh, the mind is left uncultivated and left as it is since the time of birth then one cannot have possess good mentality then uh, Uh, one will not be able to uplift oneself if however if one is able to cultivate one's mind in time then one is bound to be uplifted most of us in the world are not up to the standards uh, because uh, we are our quality of life is not uplifted instead our life is very much 
degraded. If one is uh, not, one is one possesses sharpness in a bad way, uh, because one has not cultivated one's behaviors, then one will be like animals. In the case of animals, mostly they behave uh, in uh, envious and avarish, avaricious way. They possess envy and avarice, and uh, they are very greedy and uh, uh, they have a lot of anger as for the animals. And if one cultivates one's mind, then uh, one has got to, one's, one will be able to weaken such mentality. And we have to practice so that we are not like animals. Instead, we are human beings, we should uplift ourselves as human beings. And uh, we should possess metta karuna, loving kindness and compassion among ourselves, among one another. If one is, one, we, if we do not possess metta karuna among ourselves, that means most, most, um, some may be just saying that they have metta karuna by word of mouth. In fact, they have, they do not possess real metta karuna in their mind. And uh, what will happen? If they are like this, then there is bound to be division uh, among human beings, among the groups, among communities, among uh, countries, and uh, there is bound to be destruction if one cannot possess Medagaruna. And uh, there will be no peace in the world. Hence, it is necessary to practice Adasma Panidi, to possess Medagaruna among ourselves, uh, to create a peaceful world, and uh, then uh, it will be uh, very effective. This is very important. Now, the practice of Satipatthana is to create or to make a pleasant world the world to be pleasant to live in. Not only uh, cultivate oneself to, to make our own world a pleasant one, but also we should go to the extent of making uh, other worlds or other people uh, to, to cultivate so that they can cultivate to be pleasant. So in order to rotate is we of prosperity, Arasama uh, In this connection, the advice given by Buddha to Rahula is what they of note. And the Buddha asked this question, what is the use of a mirror? Mirra. And the answer is reflection, Prabhupada Musa. It goes, it means that uh, one should cultivate oneself uh, one should shape our, our life. In order to shape our life, one should reflect upon oneself whether uh, our life is in good shape. So this uh, mirror is essential for everybody, both man and woman, in order to, to look oneself, to examine oneself uh, in the reflection whether one is in good shape, or one is dressed well, especially when one is going to attend a function. In this way, uh, the mirror, hence the Rahula, Rahula answers to the Buddha that uh, the purpose of mirror is reflection. And so when the Buddha asked this question to Rahula, that means that uh, one must reflect upon oneself like one looks into the mirror. And uh, in this way, one should uh, reflect upon oneself whether one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors are correct or not. And when one is going to do it, before one does it or acts, or speaks or think, 
uh, one should find out whether this is beneficial to oneself, beneficial whether it is beneficial or suitable, appropriate. One should reflect upon such behaviors before one undertakes this task. If, uh, if even if it is uh, beneficial, if it is not appropriate, one should not uh, act, speak, or think. And uh, if it is both beneficial and suitable, appropriate, then one should act by body, speech. And in order to be fulfilled with this atasma bhadidi, it cannot be, uh, this alone cannot be complete. And there are other things, supportive elements, supportive uh, things, things which support this, namely Patirupa Desavasa, coming to a suitable location, Saburi Supanisya, it is uh, approaching association with a virtuous people, and Pobhikita Bhunyata, having done good deeds in the past, that is, uh, done good things in accordance with the Sarasma Bhadidi, having done good deeds in the past. So in this way, one can, uh, one cultivates oneself. However, even, uh, is it sufficient by just being fulfilled with the former three things, that is, coming to a suitable place, uh, approaching uh, virtuous one and having done good things in the past? Uh, the answer is no. During the Buddha's time, there are people, there are persons who are fulfilled with the first three uh, conditions, but because they are not cultivating oneself, uh, they, are, they suffer loss, they lose their dignity, and uh, they are ostracized by the society. Hence, uh, it is not safe just by being fulfilled with the first three conditions. We shall discuss this tomorrow. Uh-huh.